December 26, 2015, a prolific tornado outbreak unfolded across the southern plains. Over a dozen tornadoes would be confirmed, but one stood out from the rest. An EF4 tornado that tore through central Texas for 13 miles, killing 10 and injuring nearly 500. The tornado devastated the Dallas suburbs of Garland and Rowlett, destroying hundreds of homes and businesses. And occurring just a day after Christmas, this outbreak caught much of the general public off guard. Today, we'll take a deep dive into the setup behind this historic outbreak, the tornadoes, and the destruction they left behind. We'll also take a look into how the communities have recovered and how they look today. Contrary to popular belief, tornadoes in December are not rare occurrences, and it's actually quite common to see some tornado outbreaks ranging widely in intensity in the winter months. In fact, just three days before the 26th, a large-scale tornado outbreak took place across parts of the Deep South, including a violent wedge tornado that tracked for 76 miles across northern Mississippi. This EF4 produced significant damage in the small town of Holly Springs, leveling many structures and killing nine. Now, let's zoom out and look at the 2015 season up to this point. As a whole, 2015 was an active year as over 1,400 tornadoes had touched down, including 20 intense or EF3 plus tornadoes. However, there were a couple standout events. In early April, a violent tornado carved a half mile wide path across northern Illinois, tracking for 30 miles and producing extreme damage along its path, particularly in the communities of Rochelle and Fairdale. This EF4 swept many well-constructed homes clean off of their foundations and claimed two lives. Many argue that this tornado was worthy of an EF5 rating. Less than a month later, another widespread tornado outbreak would ravage the Great Plains as over 130 tornadoes would touch down from the 5th to the 10th of May, including a large EF3 that would impact the southeastern portions of Oklahoma City. All of these, plus the aforementioned Holly Springs EF4, made for a very active season thus far. However, things were about to ramp up yet again as just after Christmas, another severe weather setup was taking shape over the southern plains. A surface low set up directly on the Texas-Oklahoma border, and a very potent trough set up just southwest of Texas. Now this trough was cranking, as winds were blowing out of the southwest at over 100 knots in the upper levels. On the day of, a cold front took shape across central Texas near Wichita Falls, with dry air to the west and very warm, moist air to the east, largely due to the Gulf of Mexico feeding this moisture-rich air into Texas. As seen in this sounding, instability, or energy for storms, while not extremely high at just over 1,000 joules per kilogram, was sufficient for severe thunderstorms as in wintertime events, not as much instability is required to really get storms going. To the right in the photograph, wind profiles appear favorable for tornadoes, as low-level wind shear values were very high due to the powerful trough. Given that the storm mode was forecasted to be discrete, or storms separated from each other, the chances for long tracking, potentially significant tornadoes was there. But why does the fact that storms were spread apart matter? Wouldn't it be worse if there were more storms? Not exactly. See, when there are many storms in a given area, storms have to fight for the environment, some storms can cut off the flow of other storms, and the overall system will likely be very messy. However, when storms are isolated, they have a path with the environment completely to themselves and don't have to fight to take advantage of the environment. This allows storms to maintain themselves for longer and to produce more high-end, longer tracking tornadoes. The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma was seeing all of this and decided to issue an enhanced or 3 out of 5 risk driven by a 10% risk for tornadoes. Later, just past noon, a tornado watch was issued for large portions of Texas and Oklahoma and a bit of Arkansas. The stage was set for a significant severe weather day, and it wouldn't take much longer for things to fire off. In the mid-afternoon, a storm fired in the open warm sector, that's this area right here, and soon began showing signs of intense rotation, and before long, the supercell dropped its first tornado in Ellis County. This EF3 produced widespread damage, especially across the community of Ovia, which this aerial footage is showing. Nearly 80 homes would be damaged, with over 20 being completely demolished. Miraculously, no one was killed. After this tornado lifted, the storm began to recycle. Recycling is a common process that supercells undergo, in which a tornado will form, that tornado will lift, the storm will drop another tornado, and the process will repeat, and this storm was no exception. Soon after the Ellis County tornado lifted, the storm entered Dallas County and put down another tornado just west of Sunnyvale, and a particularly dangerous situation tornado warning would be issued. 
Immediately, the tornado began to intensify as it strengthened to EF2 intensity and grew to nearly a quarter mile wide. As it passed over a small group of homes, it ripped off roofs and exteriors of homes and snapped trees. The tornado then crossed over primarily unpopulated areas, only producing minor damage to trees as the tornado moved through small forests and open fields before producing more significant EF2 damage to an RV park as some mobile homes were tossed, flipped, or completely destroyed. Then, almost like it was waiting, the tornado began to re-intensify rapidly just as it was entering more populated areas just northeast of Dallas. This began its march through Garland, as the tornado continued to intensify, plowing through suburban neighborhoods. Videos of this tornado are outright terrifying, as the now half-mile wide wedge, completely invisible in the dark of the night, tears through communities, only visible by the occasional lightning strike. The tornado would only continue to strengthen, reaching maximum intensity as a well-constructed home along Crest Point Lane would be completely destroyed. Many vehicles would also be lifted, crushed, and tossed long distances, landing in piles of debris left often unrecognizable. It was also near this location that one of the most infamous videos from this tornado was filmed by the base hunters. Oh, it's massive. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's oh. big. It's hitting stuff. Look at all that. As power lines were struck, power flashes illuminated the huge wedge tornado during its path through Garland. Shortly after, and while still at EF4 intensity, it struck a large apartment complex, and many of the residences were either heavily damaged or destroyed entirely. All of the apartment buildings were considered uninhabitable and were ordered to be torn down. Buildings in the vicinity of the apartments also met the same fate, which included a public storage storage facility off of Locust Grove Road. This aerial footage shows the sheer extent of the destruction, as the areas of southeastern Garland were flattened. Homes were destroyed, vehicles were mangled and tossed, and trees were debarked. Miraculously, while crossing through these neighborhoods, no fatalities occurred within these homes. However, this tornado would tragically soon become deadly. On Interstate 30, many cars were still driving on the highway when the tornado was approaching, which was spelling a recipe for disaster. The invisible tornado struck the interstate, in the process hitting the vehicles that were on the highway, resulting in them being lofted and mangled, many with their occupants still inside at the time of impact. The result was nine people losing their lives, all of whom were still inside of their vehicles when the tornado crossed over the interstate. This is a reminder that vehicles are not safe places to be in tornadoes. In fact, they are one of the worst places to be. If you're ever caught in your vehicle with an approaching tornado, the best thing to do is exit your vehicle and find a nearby ditch or lowering in the ground. Then, lay down and cover your head. After crossing over Interstate 30, the tornado made its way over Lake Ray Hubbard before crossing into the city limits of Rowlett, another Dallas suburb. Yet again, many homes in the area experienced extensive damage, either losing large portions of their roofs or walls or being destroyed entirely. Sadly, one man in this area of Rowlett lost his life as he was sheltering when his home was hit by the tornado. After crossing over these communities, the tornado began crossing Lake Ray Hubbard again, and shortly after, at 7.02 p.m., it roped out over the water, marking the end of its 13-mile path. By the end of it all, the tornado would tragically take the lives of 10, injure 468, and leave mass devastation across the communities of Garland and Rowlett. Over 600 communities and businesses were either damaged or destroyed completely, and many buildings that were damaged ended up being deemed beyond repair and were torn down. Having estimated maximum wind speeds of 180 miles per hour, this EF4 would go down as one of the most destructive tornadoes in Texas state history, and the night of the 26th will surely never be forgotten by residents. This December will mark the 10-year anniversary of this tornado, and since that night, the communities have been rebuilding and recovering. These photos from Google Earth imagery from 2016 and 2025 show a full before and after of the neighborhoods that were impacted by the tornado, and the community has made a full recovery. Garland stayed strong throughout the rebuilding process and showed what it's like for a town to be resilient even in the face of disaster. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of the video. If you found it enjoyable or informative and want to support me and my content creation, consider subscribing as it's a free, easy way to help me out, and the same goes for liking the video. I've linked some sites in the description if you'd like to learn more about this event. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.